Welcome to New Freedom Church. We are a church where real people can experience real, genuine freedom from a Savior that offers it freely to anyone willing to receive. If you are new with us, please like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can automatically receive new content as it's released. Over the next hour, we will worship God through singing together, and you will hear a message that is designed to help you grow deeper in your faith. Feel free to comment below and let us know where you're watching from and how can we pray for you. We want to thank all of those who have shared our videos or written a review because it really does help us reach more people with this life-changing message that there is a Savior who loves them and wants to offer them real, genuine freedom. Finally, if this is your first time with us, please fill out that Connect card at the digital link below and we will send you a free t-shirt. Now sit back, relax, and join us as we dive into worship. All right, good morning, New Freedom. I hope you brought your hearts ready for worship. Let's all stand together. Come on, let's see them hands go. He shames every idol. Without a rival, he goes by the name of Jehovah. Jehovah, he speaks into nothing, and darkness goes away. He goes by the name of Jehovah. Jehovah, call the name, call the name, call the name, Jehovah, all our praise, all our praise, all our praise belongs to him. His foes will be silenced. He's fighting for his iron. Oh, 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 there's no other God like Jehovah. Jehovah, his arm never tires. His eyes are like fire. No other God like Jehovah, Jehovah. Call the name. Call the name. Call the name. Call the name. Jehovah. All our praise. All our praise. All our praise belongs to Him. Call the name. If you don't know these, we're going to learn some names for Jehovah this morning. Amen. Because he is the one that fights your battles. He is the one that meets your needs. He's the one that heals your body. And he is the only one who can bring you peace. So we're going to sing this together. Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Nisi fights your battles. Jehovah Nisi fight your battles. Jehovah Nisi fight your battles. Jehovah Nisi fight your battles. Repeat after me. Jehovah Nisi fight your battles. Jehovah Jireh meet your need. Jehovah Rapha heal your body. Jehovah Shalom be your peace to sing it out. Jehovah Nisi fight your battles. Jehovah Jireh meet your 
Can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting. A vagabond. And just when I ran up the road, I met a man I didn't know. And he told me that I was not alone. Because you picked me up and turned me around. Another one, I am free. Oh, I am free. Oh, I lift up if you're free. Hell lost another one, I am free. Oh, I am free. Oh, I am free. Hell lost another one, I am free. I am free. I am free. Are you free this morning? Hell lost another one, I am free. Oh, I am free. Let's lift it up.
he said, please show me your glory. Then in chapter, in verse 19, then God said, I will make my goodness pass before you. I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will be compassionate upon who I will have compassion. But he said, you shall not see my face. No man could see my face and live. And the Lord said, here is peace. Here is a place by me. You need to stand on the rock. So it shall be with, with my glory passes by that I will put, my, put you in the cleft of the rock. The cleft of the rock is a place that's sheltered from the dazzling light and will cover, your, cover you with my hand while I pass by. Then I will take my hand away and you shall see my back and my face shall be, be not be seen. In chapter 34, then in verse 5, Now the Lord descended a cloud and stood there before him and reigned in his glory. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful, gracious, long-suffering, abounding in goodness and truth, and, and keeping mercy for thousands and giving inequity and transgressions to sin, and sin, but no means clearing the guilty, visiting the in inequity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children for the, to the third and fourth generation. Now when you jump up to chapter uh, 34 and 29, when Moses was come down from Mount Sinai, he had the two tablets of, of, that were in his hand when he come down from, from the mountain. And Moses did not know that his, his face shone like he talked with him. So when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, and behold, the, the skin of his face shone. He was, they were afraid to, to uh, come near him. From that point on, Moses had to cover his face with a veil because his face shone, which I think meant it was glowing with, the glory, with God's glory and that people could not stand the glory. Now he's asking us to boldly seek his face. You can imagine what Moses felt as God passed his Shekinah glory. Some of you might think, what is Shekinah glory? And the only way I can describe it is the, the glory of God that we can't stand. So while he, he's calling us now to boldly seek his face, we know we cannot see his face, for he is wanting us to, to desire his face and ask him for him to seek his face. about that for a little bit, Moses was, was, you know, he got to see the back of God, but he's asking us to seek his face now, and I think that we all need to pray, and we're going to make this not a corporate prayer, but an individual prayer for each one of us, that we should pray that, that God should, we should ask God to see his face, that, that we should seek his face, and not for, not for the one sitting next to you or the one standing beside you, but make this your personal prayer to God, that it's you speaking out. And as we praise and worship here and Joe brings the message, may we ask the Holy Spirit to be with us and, and bring us uh, a new new sense of, of God's presence in our lives. So let's, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for all you've done for us. We just ask that you would, you would help us, that we would seek your face, we would draw nearer to you, that we would feel your presence in our lives and that, that that you would use us in mighty powerful ways that we could we could do the things that you brought for us here to do. Father, we ask these things now in Jesus' name. Amen.
There's stories that have proved your faithfulness. I've seen miracles my mind can comprehend. There is beauty in what I can't understand. Jesus, it's you. Jesus, it's you. Just the mention of your name can raise the dead. So all the glory to the only one who can. Jesus, it's you. Jesus, it's you. Let me tell you something. We serve a God who makes the impossible possible. Yeah. Now I know for certain, talking to a lot of you, every single one of us here are going through something, whether it's personally or we're going through something with somebody. We have people fighting cancer. We have people fighting illnesses. We have people fighting addictions. We have people who have lost all hope in the God who is hope itself. So we're gonna claim healing. We're gonna claim deliverance today in the name of Jesus. cancer disappear we've seen broken bodies healed don't you tell me he can't do it don't you tell me he can't do it we've seen real life resurrection we've seen mental health restored don't you tell me he can't do it don't you tell me he can't do it we've seen families reunited come on don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. We've seen troubled souls deliver. We've seen addicts finally pray. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. We'll see cities in revival. The salvation flood is straight. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. 
no, 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 no. Don't lie to me. Don't lie to God. You can lie to yourself all you want. Who is in need of healing this morning? Amen. Who do you know that needs delivered this morning? Who do you know who needs delivered? We're going to sing this again. We've seen cancer disappear. We're agreeing. If you're watching online right now, we're agreeing. You will be healed. You will have a touch on your body. What ailments? If you're struggling with anxiety, depression, it has no place in the kingdom of heaven. We've seen cancer disappear. We've seen cancer disappear. We've seen broken bodies healed. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. We've seen real life resurrection and mental health restored. Don't you tell me. I want you guys to lift it up. I can't make you believe. You have to believe on your own. We've seen families. We've seen united. We've seen prodigals return. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Yes, Jesus, we accept it. We accept your spirit. We say yes to you this morning. Yes, Jesus. with all hands lifted up. This is your universal sign of surrender to God. All hands lifted up. God, we surrender. We give it to you. Not my will, but thy will be done. Not my will, but thy will be done. Somebody needs to surrender your will right now to God. There are some things you've been trying to struggle through and press through, and you've been trying to muscle it through on your own. And God is saying to you by divine decree, if you will yet surrender, if you will just give it up, if you will just lay it down, then there is freedom in surrender. Somebody, that's your word today. There is freedom in surrender. There is victory in surrender. We don't like to give up. We don't like to take away all of our options. But when we have no option but God, we have hit rock bottom. The only way is to look north where our help comes. Our help comes from the Lord. God, we lift our hands. We lift our hearts. We lift our eyes to the north. 
For our help comes from the Lord. It doesn't come from Washington, D.C. Our help comes from the Lord. Our help doesn't come from poli politicians or political solutions. Our help comes from the Lord. Our help doesn't come from our own strength, our energy, our might. Our help comes from the Lord. Somebody's concerned right now about a big impending debt that you are looking at. You are staring at a bill that looks like an elephant before you. There is such a large burden on your heart for how am I going to do this? And I say to you by the word of the Lord today, if you will yet surrender to God, if you will lay that down before him if you will make a sacrifice of praise today god will take that debt he will amaze you he will astound you he will do supernaturally above and beyond all that you can ask or think god will take care of it today there's someone who in here that you, you you've been giving care for someone you've been caring and you you have been taking care of uh, the needs of another and you wondered and you you have questioned god have you even seen me do you even see what i'm putting out god i'm tired i'm weary and my heart is broken and it doesn't seem like this is even going to come to fruition and i want to speak a word of encouragement to you that god has seen you god sees you and God will come and meet you. God will rescue you. God will give you years back that the locusts have eaten, that the canker worms have eaten. God will give you that time back. God will supernaturally endue you with power from on high that you will be able to perform that duty. You will be able to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Somebody say the land of the living. I speak life. I speak life over a dead situation. I speak resurrection power over a situation that seems like it is so far gone. It doesn't seem like anything good can come from it. And I wanna to say to you today by the spirit of God that God is resurrecting old things. God is redigging some wells in your life. God is doing something in you that is deeper and more significant than what you see on the outside. On the outside, it doesn't look like much is happening. On the outside, you're not seeing a lot of progress. On the outside, all of your efforts seem to come up vain. But I wanna speak a sure word of the Lord to you today that God is doing something in you and it shall be through you. Surrender it to him today. Come on, let's lift our hands again. Lord, we lift our hands. We lift our hands and surrender. We give to you in a yielded heart, a yielded vessel. I want somebody to say this with me. Make me, Lord. Make me, Lord. Mold me and make me. You are the potter, I am the clay. <laughs> oh, make me, Lord. Make me, Lord. Make me. Make me into the vessel of honor. Make me into the instrument of praise. Make me into the mouthpiece that you have called me to be. Make me into that vessel that you would use to impact and influence an entire area, an entire sphere of influence. I wanna to speak to somebody today that has a sphere of influence. You have influence over people's decision-making. You have influence over their budget. You have influence over the way that people perceive matters and how they look at spreadsheets and how they, they, they perceive entire industries. And I wanna say to you that if you will uh, seek God, if you will approach the throne of grace with boldness, if you will declare that God is God, that he is in charge, then you will not lack for wisdom. The Bible tells us that if you uh, desire wisdom, if you lack it, then ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach. Somebody needs to ask for wisdom today. Come on, God's moving. God's moving. What is it that you need? What is it that you need? You need to say it out loud. What is it that you need? in a breath prayer before God. I know, I know it got quiet in here. It gets uncomfortable when, when we get quiet. I don't even wanna open my eyes to look because I don't wanna be unduly influenced. God is doing something right now. God is moving up on hearts. God is restoring hearts. God is mending the broken pieces back together again. God is bringing the wayward home. God is healing our bodies the afflictions of our minds. Somebody is so tormented in your mind today that you didn't even wanna to come to church. The very last thing you wanted to do was be in this place and be, be in, in any kind of place where people would be happy because you're so sad. And God says to you today that there is a time and a season to be sad, that, that weeping endures for a night. Your joy will come in the morning. God doesn't, re, God doesn't rebuke your, your sullenness. God doesn't rebuke your heaviness, but he encourages you with his goodness. And your joy will come in the morning.
Sunday morning. Some of you have battled so long with your thought life. The enemy has crept into your thought life to lie to you, to steal and to kill and to destroy and to deceive you. You question whether God is good. This God that others declare is good, is this God good for me? I'm here to tell you today by divine decree, this God is for you. He is Emmanuel, God with you. And he fights your battles. He fights for you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, I've asked some brothers so to the back of the city. I'll have a matter of some bravo coach of the city. Later, be he tanned at the city. The Lord would say to you today that the battle that you're fighting is not against flesh and blood. You have looked to other people as your enemy. And God says today, your battle is not against flesh and blood, but you are fighting spiritual host of wickedness. You are fighting powers and principalities. And when you try to do so with the arm of the flesh, when you try to fight carnally in a spiritual war, you will be beat every time. But God says to you today that if you will take up the weapons of his warfare, if you will war from your knees, if you will get into a place of prayer, if you will hide yourself under the shadow of the Almighty, God will give you strength. God will give you hope. He will speak to you a sure word of salvation. For this matter that you're dealing with needs saved. It needs salvation. It needs delivered. And your deliverance comes through your surrender. You bear witness with that. Will you just say thank you, Lord? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You see, I'd like to move on, but I just don't feel released to move on. Hey, Joe, can I say something? Please. So you can obviously hear how great I sound today. Um, there was nothing that was going to stop me from getting up here with this team this morning to sing to our Lord. I have had a rough week with sickness. Um, I look at all these people around here. I'm looking at Lori and my wonderful in-laws, and they're here every Sunday, even though that they are going through something tremendous within their body. And you know what? They're still here. Amen. We come here on Sundays. No matter what we are going through, we, we can look at everybody out here. We don't know what you're going through. You can hear what I'm going through. But thank you for letting me be up here today, even with this raspy voice, to praise our Lord with you all. Thank you for being here with anxiety, depression, sickness. Thank you for being here. It means so much to me, to everyone else around here, that you're here with us. You know, being in the spirit, I feel it today. I don't ever talk, like for me to even be up here and sing in front of everybody is wild. Um, especially you, to actually pick the mic up and want to talk to you Thank all. You, That's even something different. So I know that he is here this morning with all of us, Thank you, healing our bodies, healing our minds. Thank you, God. You know, we, it, it can be hard at times to just give it all to him, but that's what we have to do. Thank you, God. Every day is hard. Every day is a different struggle. So if we give it all to him, that's where the magic happens. Listen, we're going to do something. I want you to keep the lights just like they are. Because I don't want anybody to be inhibited. What someone's going to think or someone's going to see me. I want to give the altar call now. Not at the end. Now. This is the altar call. And the call to come to the altar is to surrender. If you have never made Jesus Lord of your life, you are missing out on the best and the greatest gift that God has ever given. Today is the day. Mercy is preaching. Grace is here today. And God's arms are open wide. If you need to say yes to Jesus as Savior and Lord, then I would love to meet you up here and we would love to pray with you. It's a simple prayer. Save me a sinner. Dear God, save me a sinner. I repent. Save me a sinner. I accept Jesus as the full sacrifice for the debt of my sin. 
and I'll live for him. If there's somebody that needs to lay down something that was called out here just a few moments ago on stage, if, there is, if you resonate, if anything bore witness with you and you need to lay that down, then now is the time. I know somebody's going to think, well, they're going to, if I go up there, they're going to think I, 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 I've been sinning. Listen, we all already know you've been sinning. That's, that's, what you, that's what sinners do. But we're saved by the grace of God. Amen? Amen. Maybe you just need to walk this aisle and give something to God. Just lay it down before him. Maybe you need to make your life a sacrifice of praise. They're going to sing this, I surrender. And when we do, I want you all around the room. I want you to come. And you say, well, pastor, I can pray in my seat. You can. Yes, that's true. But there's something about coming to an altar. That's what they did in the Old Testament. They would bring their sacrifice. They would bind it to the horns of the altar. You know why they had to tie it to the horns of the altar? Because a sacrifice that is living will squirm. It will squeal. It will try to get away. And that's exactly what's happening right now in the hearts of so many people. They don't want to come up here. But I'm telling you, by the Spirit of God, if you will come and you will bind yourself for a moment to this altar, if you will bring your life as a sacrifice, there is something powerful about walking an aisle and saying, God, in this sacred space, in this holy place, I am your temple. I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And we as sacred space come in a place of prayer, in a time of thanksgiving, in a time of surrender. Come, come now. Come, let's go all around the room. Let's get down here. Let's get it to God. Let's give it to God. Simple, I surrender all. Yeah, I like the next one. Yeah, okay. yeah. Lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. Hey, true. Saints, lift it up.
more time, one more time, I surrender all. Come on, one more time with our hands lifted up. This is the universal sign that I give up, I give in. I I have no more fight in me. Come on, how many want to just say before God, I'm not fighting anymore because I know the word and the word says the battle doesn't belong to me. The battle belongs to the Lord. I give up, Lord. I give up, Lord. They're going to keep playing for just a moment. You, You can be seated, but... But please maintain a posture of God's presence for just a moment. If you're still praying, you can keep praying. You don't don't need to head back, but I wanna have a moment here because we read things in the Bible and and sometimes it says, it just, we kind of gloss over it and we think, well, that's nice or that must have applied to another day. The apostle Paul told us that in times of worship, in times of of giving our lives and our, our hearts to God, and that's not just in when music is playing at church, but worship is truly a lifestyle. For the Christian believer, worship is exactly what we do 24 seven, we worship. Now we're blessed with times to be able to turn the radio on and listen to music or come into a corporate place of worship we call a worship service, but truly worship is a lifestyle. And one of the things that, that I want you to maybe observe that you, you could have easily missed because they did this so well, and this was done by the spirit, is that the Apostle Paul told us that when we are worshiping God, we do, we wanna sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Well, songs would be things that were written and prepared and we have graphics for them. And this team works hard every single week to, to make sure that we have the, you know, the right feel and mode and flow and all that kind of thing. And, and, and you know, God can work through our preparation. Somebody say, God can work through our preparation. God doesn't need a bunch of chaos. He can work through our preparation. I'm glad they prepare. So that's songs. And in hymns, how many love the old hymns of the church? I'm telling you, there are sermons in the old hymns of the church. It's wonderful to be able to, without a need for a lot of instruments, be able to sing a song, a hymn, something that you learned long ago and something that just resonates true to you. There's times where no other songs seem to really do, but a hymn, boy, it can just, it can meet that need, can it? But then Paul says something else. He says, spiritual songs. Well, what's the apostle talking about spiritual songs? Well, those are songs by the Spirit of God, dictated by the Spirit of God. I I simply looked over to Pastor Rick a few minutes ago and I said, I think we need to sing I Surrender. He said, no problem. And they started singing I Surrender. And that was a song. That was a hymn. But then he pulled out from the the song list another little, little place to put in there and started singing the names of God. That was a spiritual song. I don't think anyone has ever recorded I Surrender All with the names of God like that. That just happened today. That's a spiritual song. Can you give God a hand for demonstrating his word through us in an instant moment? You see, God can work through your preparation, but God can also work through spontaneity. And spontaneously, just a moment ago while we were praying, Brother Drew came up to me and he said, I I wanna share my testimony. The word of God tells us this, that we are made overcomers. Now we don't wanna be under, we wanna be over, right? We are made overcomers by the blood of the lamb, what Jesus did for us on the cross. I mean, are thankful for Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. We're made overcomers because of his work, but also by the word of our testimony. When we testify, when we tell of others what God has done and is doing through us. See, the Bible is a living book. There's no new scripture being written. But the Bible is a living book, so spiritually God is enabling and quickening our lives. And we are written epistles to be read by all men. So our lives preach, our lives say something, our testimonies encourage others. And maybe you don't need this testimony right now today in your life, but I just want you to tuck it away because there will come a day when either you or someone around you will receive that devastating news from the doctor, news like, We have to run some more tests. There's something abnormal. There's something unusual. There's something that we're a little concerned about. And we're made overcomers by the blood of Jesus, the word of our testimony. And then he says this last part, 
by not loving our lives to the death. What's that mean? That means what we just have done in this service, we have surrendered. If you love your life, you're gonna do everything you can to protect it, to, to make sure that you have a buffer zone, that nobody can take advantage of you. Listen, if you are going to be a bridge of gospel work to this weary and sin sick world, then you will by means get walked on every now and then. And that's okay because we love not our lives to the end. I'm not gonna do anything to hurt my body, but I am going to give of myself, give of my life to my master, loving not my own life unto the death. I'm gonna ask Brother Drew if you'll come and share this testimony of what God has done. They're gonna keep playing. Let's, let's hear what God has to say through this. Y'all give me a little grace because this is the first time I've said this out loud. You already know I got a sensitive heart. <laughs> my best God, Lord, help me get through this. Last week I stood right here and I told you guys, I don't care what you're going through. You don't know what I'm going through, but I'm going to pray this anyway. So I'm going to tell you what I was going through. It was a routine blood test pastor's been talking about. My doctor called me in. He said, hey. My doctor called me and he said, that's, that's a lot better, right? I'm like, Lord, I'm here now. The doctor called me and he said, he said, hey, there's an elevation in your white blood cell now. And we need you to go see a hematologist, see what's going on. So I made the appointment. I hate making appointments, one, because I got to admit something's wrong or it might be wrong. But two... Like, I made the appointment, like, it was like a month and a half later, and you're just, like, sitting there waiting. But I went to the hematologist, and we got the test, and uh, we got the test results back to the hematologist. And she said, hey, there's an ab abnormality in your blood, and there's a possibility you have leukemia. And we need to do a bone marrow biopsy to verify. I went in and got the bone marrow biopsy test results, go back to the doctor. Doctor says, the biopsy confirmed. My amazing wife told me when we first got the, hey, there's a possibility. She said, hey, we're not accepting this. We're going to put this in God's hands. We're going to pray through this. And we prayed. And I reached out to Pastor and said, Pastor, here's what's going on. I said, we're not believing this. And Pastor prayed. And I called my family and I called some friends. But then we got the confirmation. I'll be real with you guys. I accepted it. It's okay, God. We're going to do what the doctor says. We're going to take the medicine. We're going to do the things. As it was last Friday, I got that diagnosis. Last Friday, the doctor said, hey, the bone marrow test confirmed that there's evidence of leukemia. But it's early. So it looks like it's very early. Wednesday, maybe Thursday. They went ahead and ran tests. So the doctor said, hey, we want to see if, you're up, if your levels have elevated or not. Wednesday or Thursday, Leslie calls me. And she says, hey, your, uh, your test came back from the follow-up blood test. And they were zero. She said, but I don't know if I was reading that right. Within about an hour, my doctor called Dr. Selvis called and she says, hey, the doctor wants to talk to you. This is the first time the doctor has literally gotten on the phone with me. She says, hey, remember how we did that follow-up test? It came back negative. That abnormality in your blood, it's not there. So I'm not sure what the bone marrow biopsy was saying, but it's that original abnormality, it's not there anymore. It's showing zero. But we're gonna double check in a few months. 
Let's check it in a few months. <laughs> Let's do that. You know, I remember as a kid when I was, I was talking to a buddy of mine about this. When I was reading the story of Moses and Moses going to Pharaoh and asking Pharaoh to release the, the Israelites and God kept bringing, kept hardening Pharaoh's heart. He kept bringing the plagues and it's like, God, why in the world? You tell Moses to go talk to Pharaoh. Then you tell Pharaoh to say no. And then you bring the plagues. So why would you do that? And God said, because I needed it to be known that it was me. It wasn't Pharaoh saying, okay, fine, that's cool. It wasn't Moses saying, being all eloquent and perfect about how he went to Pharaoh. No, God said, I needed them to know it was me. And I'm saying like, God, why did it to go through all this? I mean, why couldn't we, why in the bone marrow thing say, no, it's not there? God said, because it had to be me. The doctor came in and said, we have, not only as the first test said we think it's leukemia, but the second test has confirmed it. And then three days later, whoo. said, just kidding. <laughs> so again, I don't know what you're going through. And I don't care. Mm. Because God has made lines in the story in the Bible where it says, but God. Mm. It doesn't get more powerful than that, y'all. I don't care what you're going through because God, you're going through something. You're dealing with something. You got a bad report. You got a, you got a balance in your, in your bank account that doesn't look the way you want it to or the way it should. Mm. You got a you got a word from your boss that doesn't go. I can testify about that too. Hmm. Not a boss literally told me she wanted to fire. No, literally told me she told her boss to fire me. And, and her boss said yes. And they went to their boss. And their boss said no. Hmm. And then they gave me a promotion. <laughs> I don't care what you're going through because God has got this. Mm. Sorry, Pastor, I went a little farther than I thought. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. You know, I, I told you that when we got the confirmation, I accepted it. I did. I said, okay, God. I wasn't scared. I wasn't mad. God, I've been through a lot in my life. I won't go into all that right now. But I've learned that none of it matters. Because of God. What's going on in this earth? It's it's not it's not the way God intended it originally. Cancer wasn't in his original plan. All the stuff we deal, all the stuff we see on the news, that wasn't in God's original plan. That's us. That's a fallen world. That's sin taking over. That's the result of the devil running rampant. That's not how God originally intended this in the, in the Garden of Eden. This is, this is sin. This is, this is not his stuff. So I don't care what happens on the earth because I know what's going to happen next. And no matter, no matter what you're going through, If you can get a hold of this. No matter what you're going through, it doesn't matter. 
because this earth is temporal. These bodies are mortal. But your soul is not. And God's kingdom is not. And that's what matters. Thank you, Jesus. Just feel like as we're singing this song, or we open it up, and just listening to each brother's grief, and, and all these little snippets go in, it's like, there's so many songs that we can sing. Everything is on. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Then you have Holy Lord God Almighty. Then you have the new Jira. You are enough, Jara. You are enough. I will be content in every circumstance, Jara. Let's stand. Let's sing that together, Jara. Jara, sing it out, Jara. You are enough. Sing it if you believe it. Jaira, you are enough in every circumstance. I will be content in every circumstance. Jaira, you are enough. Lift it up if you believe it. Sing it again. Jaira, you are enough. Jaira. You are enough. I will be content in every circumstance. Jaira, you are enough. Let's give God a shout of praise this morning. There is a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. Tell when you're in the presence of God with your brothers and sisters. If this is your first time being with us, we thank you. And this is not the normal for us, but we like it. <laughs> we love for this. We thank you for being here with us today. And uh, we'd like to connect with you. We have a connection card that we would like to uh, have you fill out. And we got a gift for you at the front desk. And as we give our praise and we give our, our worship, we also give of our time and our offerings. And uh, so, God, we thank you for everything that you've given us. And it feels good to give back to God. No matter what I could ever earn, I can never give back enough to God. He has given me so much. As we go through storms, through, when we go through battles, when we think there's no hope, he is always there. I know that he will heal me or he'll carry me through it. He will direct me as long as I follow him and his Holy Spirit. When I get in trouble, it's when I think I can do it on my own and I try to take a hold of the plow. But following Jesus, I have never ever regretted following Jesus. So, it's hard to let go of this. It is hard to let this go. And I, I, that's why you made me go on stage. God bless you. May God keep you and be with you until we meet again. I want to say, God's people said God bless. God Amen. Bless God bless each and every one of you.